You may be wondering, how can I start measuring my DIY speaker and get reliable results? The very first step is to find a qualified measurement microphone today. I'm going to show you how to choose the best one. Hi, and welcome to my channel. There are many different models available in online shops, and it's easy to get confused by the wide range of prices and specifications. A proper measurement mic should meet standard requirements and before looking at the tests. It's helpful to understand a bit about the specifications. For example, let's look at the Behringer ECM8000. The graph on the right shows that this microphone has a very flat frequency response up to 20 kHz. This means it can capture sound pressure with excellent accuracy. The flatter the response graph, the more precise the measurement. Another key factor is the calibration file. A standard measurement microphone should always come with a calibration file, which ensures the accuracy you need when measuring your DIY speakers. A calibration file is a small size file. You need to import that into your preferred measurement software such as REW Room EQ Wizard. All standard measurement microphones come with acceptable sensitivity. Still, sensitivity is a critical factor because it determines how well the mic can capture even the weakest sounds. This becomes even more important if you're building your own DIY microphone. A high sensitivity mic should also have a very low self noise, otherwise the measurements will not be accurate. Although the left figure looks smaller, it's actually very important, and I'll tell you why. You've probably seen a football reporter at a stadium holding a microphone. That microphone is designed in a way that reduces the crowd noise coming from the spectators. And the atmosphere here is absolutely electric. The fans are on their feet. You can feel the energy pulsating through the stadium. As a result, the reporter's voice comes through loud and clear. While the background chaos from the stadium is kept to a minimum, the reporter's mic is most likely a cardioid microphone. But if you try to use a cardioid mic to measure your speaker in a room, the results wouldn't be reliable because many of the room reflections and modes would be filtered out. That's why it's important to make sure your measurement mic has an omnidirectional capsule. Don't worry about this, because all measurement microphones are omnidirectional by design. The purpose of these explanations is simply to highlight why you should avoid using cardioid studio microphones. For measurements, here are the specs of one of the most commonly used studio microphones it has. A cardioid pickup pattern, which makes it unsuitable for measurement purposes. The ergonomics of a measurement microphone are very important. Its body should be simple and have a small cross-sectional area. This helps minimize reflections caused by the microphone itself. Fortunately, all standard measurement microphones meet this requirement. An XLR connection also provides a very reliable and durable link ensuring stable performance while keeping the risk of physical bending or damage to a minimum. If you connect a microphone with this impedance to a sound card whose input impedance is significantly higher, there will be no problem, since standard sound cards always have high input impedance. Compatibility is never an issue. So far, we've talked about polar pattern, impedance, sensitivity, frequency response, and XLR connection. In the next part, we'll compare some popular measurement microphones. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.